Hey guys, I'm back. It's Dang and Rampa. It's the same day for me, just back to back recordings, although I did take a little break. I wanted to solve a mystery about the handbook thing. Did not solve it. I'm talking about this in case you forgot. I didn't solve it because I was too concerned with the fact that when I said goodbye on the last episode, I think I referenced cake in the face. I'm pretty sure the phrase is pie in the face. And so, I mean, could it be more clear that I am ready to solve a murder mystery? Yeah. Nothing could tell you possibly any more about how ready I am than to make that dumbass mistake. Well, we got, uh, we're, we're losing people fast. We have both Hifumi and Taka gone. And I thought I had it. I thought I had it all figured out before the trial this time. And then she went, uh, Ki she being Kyoko, went and said something about a handbook, and now I have no idea what I'm getting into. Because <laughs> nothing I can think of has to do with the handbook. And just a reminder, since it is the same day for me, I am really not into the idea of trying to do my terrible voice acting, because even after a day of rest, like my voice is like, ah, oh, don't do it. So I've been doing a much, much lighter version of it. And I've been talking quieter. Everyone had heard Monokuma's proclamation, and they were gathered by the red door. And as soon as we were all there... Monokuma appears! Excuse me, why are there two of them? Hello, hello, hello. I don't know if that's supposed to be multiple hellos, or is he being funny and doing an echo? He's multiplied. Nope, not multiplication. It just looks that way because of an illusion. Okay. I'm moving so fast it only looks like I've multiplied. Can you guys tell which one is the real Monokuma? No. Can we just get on the elevator already? Boy, You're not playing along. Stop. We're not here to play with you. Okay. Fine. Hey! Hey! Then if everyone's here and ready to go, please board the pain train or elevator. I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. Okay then, shall we? <laughs> please! Hold on, I'm not mentally prepared yet. What the heck? You'll never be mentally prepared. You can't run away anymore, hero. You're gonna pay for your sins. What the heck? I told you already, I didn't do it for serious. Hmm. That reminds me, did you ever find the other costume or the note? <sighs> uh, well, no, but how unfortunate Then it would seem we have our culprit. <laughs> As a reminder to those who are ready to see if I'm right or wrong, I think Celeste got Hifumi and possibly Taka in on a plan to make them accomplices kill two people they killed the first one and i think celeste then killed hifumi one of the possible accomplices uh thereby making sure she was the only one who was blackened and therefore the only one who could graduate hey this isn't the place to talk about it save your accusations for when we get to the courtroom that's right she's right let's get down there first then the story can really begin yeah, good idea. I have to do it. I can't let whoever killed Hifumi and Taka get away with it for everyone who's still alive and for the two that lost their lives. The one who killed Hifumi and Taka, the one who killed two of our friends, the killer is one of us. Someone right here. I thought I knew what the words were going to be, and I didn't. Yeah, I'm trying to think. So we lost three people in the first one. Sayaka murdered by Leon, and then we punished Leon, but also Junko was killed very early. We hardly got to know her. Uh, second one, we lost... Um... Wow, was that... Was that Chihiro? Was the second one? This is just the third time around? Seems so long ago. Yeah, so Chihiro was killed and then Mondo punished for it. So, And now we've already got two people dead with another person to punish. 
our numbers are very, very dwindled. All right, let's talk to him before we get on. I don't like Monokuma's carefree attitude. I don't think you would. Just the worst. Let's hurry and go so we can make Hiro pay for his crimes. Don't think it's him. Hmm. Were you listening? Wait till we get to the courtroom to begin your arguing. They're just talking. <laughs> it would appear the culprit has been confirmed. This trial will be over in no time. I think that's what you're hoping. Hey. The story begins when we get down there. I'm still not sure what you were trying to tell me. <sighs> Was it me? You gotta believe me. And then her... Oh. Oops. <sighs> oh, stop crumbling. Then her... Yes. Come on, Big Mac, let's do it. I do at least like the nicknames from her. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I took one last deep breath and exhaled slowly, waiting, waiting to exhale. I began to walk toward the elevator. Once everyone was aboard, all aboard, the doors closed on their own, and the steel box began to move. The clunking of the elevator kept us company as we fell further and further down. Now you're not falling. There was no going back until we settled all this. We couldn't go anywhere. Not sure how long it was before the elevator finally came to a stop. Oh, is it going to be redecorated too? He did that last time. The elevator door slid open, opening up onto a cruel fate. He sure did. When I see you all gather together like this, I realize just how few of you there are left. Your school life is slowly reaching its climax. Just the one. Only because of you. <sighs> Why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? Wah -wah? Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute. Come on. Stop goofing around and begin the trial. <clears throat> Don't rush me. Of course I'm going to start it. I would never be like, stay tuned for the action-packed clash trial after this commercial break. I'd never hold out on you like that. Okay, let's begin. Get to your assigned seats. And so, the curtain opened once again. Okay, here's where he does the deadly stuff a bunch. We don't need to repeat that every time. Yeah, let's save. And, uh... I know I got skill points. I don't remember if I got skills. Oh, okay. These ones are equipped. I did get skills. I take it all back. Handiwork allows you to reload two bullets at once. What do you mean reload? I don't reload bullets during that. Maybe because I'm not on the higher difficulty level? Which I still don't know what difficulty level I'm on. I know the top one is mean. I didn't select that, but the other one that I picked, I, it, I thought it was the middle one, but they don't reference it as easy, medium, hard. So I don't know which one I'm actually on. Cool and composed steadies your aim a little. Effective during nonstop debate and the hangman's gambit. Oh, so it shouldn't bounce all around. Well, I just barely have enough skill points to actually equip everything. Class trial, all rise. Let's begin with a basic explanation of nope, the Nope, we don't need it. Punish every now then, to begin with... We already know who did it. Was that? It was Hero. He does not have an alibi for when the murders took place, and we found him in that suit. Don't try and deny it. You killed them. I didn't. Someone knocked me out. I, I was asleep the whole time. I don't know anything about it. Shut your murdering mouth, murderer! You're one to talk. Who are you calling a murderer? I am sorry to say, Hero, but we do have evidence. Blueprint for the suit. Parts we assume were used to build it. And all of it was found in your room. You have to admit, the evidence is quite compelling. It points to you as having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after crime. Again, reminder, I think it was Celeste this whole time, and I swear this is the most she's ever talked in a trial. How many times do I have to tell you? I... I... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! Is Hero really the killer, or...? Now, before anything else, we have to make that clear. Shh. 
My bullet is Yasuhiro's message. Yasuhiro's message? Hang on, I don't I don't even remember what that truth bullet is. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so he does have an alibi for the first murder. Or attack, I mean. Found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I, I, I don't know anything about that stuff. It's not true. It's a conspiracy. Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a second. Oh. Which one was I supposed to shoot at? Oh, the handwriting on the blueprint. Right. Okay. That with the message. Yep, I got it. Okay. Thank you, game. Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all No, that's wrong. <laughs> are we sure Hero really made those blueprints? What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. It's the note that Hero wrote. Asking everyone to meet up after Alter Ego disappeared. The handwriting's obviously different. When you Oops. when you compare it to the blueprints, there's no way you could think the same person made both of them, unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. No, the differences are bigger than that. I think. Come on, I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. He's got a point. So Makoto. Are you saying you don't think Hero's the culprit? And he's not the only one. I think Hero's innocent as well. What? Then who was in that robo-justice suit? Is it like Hero said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? The suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. And of course he passes it off to me. So? Who was in the Robo Justice? If they're saying somebody, because I was questioning even if somebody was in the suit. So if this is the question they're asking me, there was somebody in the suit, and they've made it clear already it could only be Hero, but we also know he's been drugged. And I kind of remember saying it looked like he was leaning forward in that still that was taken of him. So I guess that kind of does confirm this suspicion that I've been going along with that it's Celeste and Hifumi on this one because Hifumi looked like he could have been supporting the suit on his back so yeah had to be Hero in there other than Hero I can't think of anyone else it could have been obviously he was the one in that particular suit and we never found any kind of second suit then there can be no doubt Hero is the prime suspect. It's fine that he's a suspect. That doesn't mean he did it. That doesn't make any sense. You just said Hero didn't do it. It makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. So what you're saying is... That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the robo-justice. Yeah, agreed. What? Now that's a bold assumption. And what reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of course. But before we get to that, there's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Hey, stop trying to boss us around! It's what he does. All things have a proper order. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Right. The dolly was what his body, well, his body, so first he was wrapped, I guess, in the tarp and then put on the dolly. I just don't know if there's like an elevator we never saw that made it faster or something. Oh, you know, I keep forgetting those were on the same floor for his body. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? The things that were used to move Taka's body was, well, hopefully this doesn't screw me up here. I got it! Yeah? Yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. It's the first time they had me pick two things. Oh, it's right here, okay. I got it! They were a dolly and a tarp, right? No, they were a tarp and a dolly. Come on, Makoto. 
Yeah, what's with the attitude? So, let's see if I can explain. Taka's body disappeared from the equipment room. And then we rediscovered it in the repository. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that up until then was stored in the equipment room. So the killer must have seen it there and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Okay, that explains the tarp. And the dolly? Same thing. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. But when the body disappeared, so did the dolly. I think maybe Hafumi killed Taka and not Celeste, keeping her hands clean of at least one of the kills. And they would have both been looking for Alter Ego together. Just a thought. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, so did the doll. In other words, you think they used the dolly to move the body, am I right? But are you sure you are not mistaken? Huh? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? Yes. That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. Is it not possible that it was in the repository all along and you simply didn't realize it? Nope, not possible. She's raised an objection. How do you respond? By punching her in the face and saying, nah uh There is no shame in being wrong. Nobody expects much from you anyway. Now I really want her to have been the one who did it. We have all accepted the fact that you rarely understand what is going on around you. I would like to second the motion that I may raise myself about punching. Can we do that? Oh, I've never had anyone sound so nice while being so mean, but maybe I can change her mind. If I can just explain to them why the dolly must have been moved from the equipment room to the repository. There were the streaks in the... Oh. Oh, good. A new element. Fantastic. <sighs> Oh, <laughs> that's the second time that happened where I got a skill that I didn't understand. And it turns out, oh, I just hadn't gotten that element to it yet. Oh, this is the B2B. Are you going to make me press a third button? <laughs> what am I, a video game player? At the bottom of the screen underneath the tempo marker, you see your ammo count. Up until now, there hasn't really been a limit on how you destroy your opponent's statements. But from now on, just locking on and pressing the Y button won't be enough to handle them. Now it will cost you one bullet to destroy a single remark. Once you run out of bullets, you can't destroy any more statements, no matter how locked on you are. However, you can reload by pressing the X button. Okay, so Y to shoot, A to lock on, X to reload. Just like locking on, why the ellipses? It's like they know I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Just like logging on, you'll have to press the X button in time with the tempo marker. Basically, just remember that X now has a function along with the A and the Y buttons. You will automatically reload at the start of fever time and your ammo will not decrease. So, I think it was right bumper for that. And I just, I've been waiting for the neg time or whatever they called it. Oh, but if your action difficulty is set to gentle, you, you want to reload at all. I don't think it is. All right. <clears throat> Here we go to the rhythm game that I'm, should be really easy and it's not for me. You had it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. I was pressing the wrong button. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. Away with you. You miserable wretch. Oh. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Lies will get you nowhere. Oh. Do your worst, you miserable wretch. Oh my god, nope. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Wait. So oh, I thought she lies will get you nowhere. I cannot agree. This should prove it. That was fast. If 
if you're asking for proof that the dolly moved, I have it right here. When I found the dolly in the repository, one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire mark in it that matched the dolly wheels. Tra the killer probably so pulled that. the dolly through the blood on accident as they wheeled the body out of the room. And as the blood dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. <laughs> well, anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Yeah, the subject of how Robo Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then what kind of robot is it? <laughs> We're not worried about the type of robot it is. I'm not sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. You couldn't move the bodies with it. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What does he mean by that? I don't know. It's just the thing I said before. This, if I end up being right, this will be the fastest I've done one of these. Robo Justice costume. As we know, Taka was killed in the equipment room. Mm -hmm. And from there, the body was moved to the repository, correct? Yes. Yeah, the culprit wrapped the body in the tarp, uh -huh. then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off, Yeah, right? that one might be now, the one. Keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a handle. Well, yeah, but even without a handle, all you'd have to do is bend nope. over. No, that's wrong. You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like she that? She would know. She tried it on. What do you mean? Think back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together. Remember? Yep, yep. Another flashback. They have not stopped doing that. When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Well, what's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? When you can't even see your feet? You really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? Yeah, it'd be totally impossible. Not that I can say for sure myself. On top of that, if you were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit, it's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Oh yeah, good point. Well, I mean, isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? You can't. Uh, yeah, this one. I got it! <clears throat> I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you remember... Right. He needed help getting out of it. That's true. It seems impossible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Then... you really can't take it off by yourself? Hero wasn't just making it up? Uh, of course I wasn't making it up! If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect it. Yeah, that's right! So... It's really, really true that Robo Justice couldn't have moved the dolly? To be clear, whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? Oh no, the bullshit you did? No. You all got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo Justice? If whoever was in that suit is not the culprit, how do you explain that? Besides, do you remember what the now deceased Hifumi said? So long as those facts exist, the proper conclusion is beyond question. The individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. It was Hero, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be right. Nope, you weren't there when I was talking to her. Wait a second! 
It's still far too early to reach that conclusion. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it. Before we rush to a verdict, shouldn't we explore every single possibility? Instead of seizing on one viewpoint, the truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. Perhaps, but where do we go from here? Let's review this series of unfortunate events from the beginning. Maybe we'll uncover something new. <laughs> what a pain in the ass! I don't disagree, but our lives are on the line. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Plus, maybe we'll get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. Yeah, thank you, Hina. All right, then. Let's take another look back at what happened. I suppose we could start with this morning. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. Makoto, Hina, Kyoko, and myself. We waited there for quite a while, but nobody else showed up. So we went to look for everyone. That was around 8 a.m. And as soon as we split up, Kyoko went missing. Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room and quickly came to get Makoto and me. It seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. I know it was an hour because I remember being attacked a little after seven. That was when we saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. Wasn't she earlier telling us, like, I don't believe her story for a bunch of other reasons, but I could have sworn before she said a little before seven, she figured it was about to not be night anymore. Oh, her account is about that part. Okay. As it turns out, it was Robo Justice. It also soon became clear that this same Robo Justice had abducted Hifumi. We were soon joined in our search by Byakuya and Toko, and then went on to find Hifumi in the library. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office and resumed our search for the suspect. But not long after leaving the nurse's office. Oh, I can skip that. When Celeste told us that, we decided to split up and search the second floor. And soon after that, I saw someone moving around on the third floor. And I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. And then... Uh -huh. At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office, while Sakura, Yakuya, and Toko chased after the suspect. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi, dead. And that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor to let the others know what had happened. Meanwhile, we had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time. Because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. And that's when I told you guys about Hifumi. Then the three of us headed for the nurse's office. But right after we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who'd arrived after us. And she told us something very surprising. We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out in the equipment room. So we hurried back again. But when we got there, we discovered that now Taka's body had also gone missing. Next thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository. Which is where we rediscovered the corpses. I think that about covers it. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. Okay, well, if that's true, then what? Rather than a single series of events, 
I think we have to consider each murder a separate situation. Okay. And from there, we can uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Okay. Now then, let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. Okay, the contradictions hidden in what happened to Taka. The watch, we know that was an issue. In order to uncover the truth of this case, I have to find them no matter what. <clears throat> Monokuma file number three. Okay. Mentioned similar weapons. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi. Or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say? Yeah, what? I know that's not... Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice Hammer 3. While Taka's death... Oh. I hadn't considered that. Hold on. What do I have on that? Oh, I don't have any on that. Were hmm. Were the hammers meant to be breadcrumbs for that? Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, I hadn't considered that at all. So we've got this queen hammer, which we know had to be used to kill somebody, but I hadn't considered that the number on the hammers was meant to be a breadcrumb about who died when, going in numerical order. So Celeste was attacked with hammer one, Hufumi was found with hammer two, and then Taka with Hammer 3. Now, based on my theory, Hifumi wasn't actually dead. But it seems like this was done as a way to make it look like between the two, Hifumi died first. And in fact, I think that is... Oh, I can't pull up the transcript. See? So it's obvious Taka came... Right. Hina's saying Taka came after. I don't think so. I think they were uh, red here. So, oh, wait. But the Monokuma file won't... I wonder if he died. Oh, I'm supposed to be able to. I forgot what they call. Sorry, guys. I forgot. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Hang on. Oh, crap. I thought there was a way to um, steal a phrase. Is that what flashback is? Let me try it. Or perhaps it was after. We already know what order they were killed in. Yeah, okay. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the justice hammers. No, that's wrong. I didn't consider this. That's pretty clever. Hold on. There's no reason to assume that the hammers were used in the same order as their numbers. If anything, that's just another way the killer tried to disguise their actions. So you're saying the culprit wanted us to think the hammers were used in order, but in reality, Taka was killed before Hifumi? Okay then, let's see the proof. The clean hammer? Oh, uh... Taka's watch, which doesn't fit her account of the time. Damn it, it's this one. Um, oh, easy, yeah, wristwatch, okay. Uh, gimme a W. There it is, gimme. Gimme an A. Those aren't A's. Give me a C. Oh, you gave me a C. Give me an H. What does it spell? I don't know. Now I understand. I've got it. Taka's wristwatch. See? Look. It broke with the hands pointing just past six o'clock. 
It must have gotten broken when he was attacked by the killer. Because as of last night... Uh-huh. Back to that. So if it wasn't broken after 6 last night, then he must have been attacked around 6 this morning. And that would be his official time of death. But if that's true, then he was killed well before Hifumi. Correct. And before Celeste was attacked this morning, which happened around 7. That's right. Taka was killed before any of the other incidents took place. That simple fact slipped past all of us. We made the wrong assumption about the order of events, all because of those justice hammers. That's exactly why the culprit wrote the numbers on each hammer and had them increase in size. That way, when we saw how they were used in each incident, we'd easily make that wrong assumption. Now, if Taka was killed around six, then everyone's alibis for his murder go out the window. Yeah, that's true. Because when he was killed, we hadn't met up in the dining hall yet. Right. That may be true in the case of Taka's murder. <clears throat> but not Celeste's attack. All of our alibis still hold true for Hifumi's. And also for the attack on Celeste. That's right. With him, at least, we're all safe. When we heard Hifumi screaming, we were all together. Except for Hiro and Kyoko. Then we all ran down to the nurse's office, and that's where we found his body. That's totally true! We're all in the clear! Oh, I know! They must have recorded him screaming on a tape or something, then played it later on! If that's true, where's the tape? Yeah, how did that go somewhere? I don't know. Don't just go making stuff up! Anyway, we all have rock-solid alibis for when we heard Hifumi scream. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Hina and I were in the bathroom together, while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? And then, there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. I'm currently focused on the e-handbook thing. I still don't understand it. Well, don't forget, I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time. Yeah, I had questioned that at one point. Wait, then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right there. No, she's prideful. Even if she could pull that off, there's no way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. Because, as we just established, she was passed out in the equipment room when his body disappeared. Besides, I didn't do either of them anyway. In other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared. So they most certainly could have done those things. Hmm. So what now, Kyoko? For now, we can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. In particular, I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. That's true. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't figure out how to explain his body disappearing. And according to what Celeste said, his body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes off of it. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to the third in that short amount of time? Oh man, yeah! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Well, what if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. Yep. The, the dead body m moved on its own? <laughs> no! Not another ghost! I don't think it has anything to do with the occult. I think what she's implying is, we thought Hifumi was dead, but perhaps in reality he was still alive. He was... alive? Are you saying Hifumi wasn't carried out of the nurse's office? but simply walked out on his own. But I mean, we found his body. He was dead. Perhaps he was simply playing dead. And it was checked for a pulse. <laughs> that 
It isn't possible. All right. What you giving me? Broken wrist wristwatch for Hufumi? Okay. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement Wait, was made. what did she say? Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Oh, okay, I have to absorb one of those. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's up? office? Nope, that's the wrong one. There's a chance he would No. Hifumi was dead. Without a and you know something that, she huh? said I missed. Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that could have matched this one with Kyoko's thing. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Oh. What does that have to do with what I said, or do you just not know what you're doing? Hey, chill. Shoot. Oh no. So wait. Are you saying there's only so many what is he was actually still No. Oh shit. It is impossible. Uh wonder if it's that. And you know that shortly you heard So okay, well I got enough hearts to try this, so let me try this one next. It was intended to signal someone Someone else's discovery. Do I still have that bullet is my question. I do. Okay. Are you saying that when we first found he yeah, we... there's a chance he was actually still alive? Maybe. No. It is impossible. Hifumi was dead, and you know that. Surely you heard the body discovery announced. Hifumi's dead body had been found. I, they should have counted it if it's those two, because all I did was flip them. Come on now. Was the body discovery announcement that was made really intended for Hifumi? Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. That's right. And there was a second it announcement. Long after finding his body, that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. There were. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. What do you say, Monokuma? Any comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. But what I can say about the body discovery announcement is that it's only broadcast when three or more mm -hmm. people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our yes, question, Yes, it did. Man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. No, actually, that was plenty. Yep. Huh? He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time. Bingo. Which means, even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. Okay, the first time we played was when we found each body in the nurse's office in the equipment room. And the second time was when, when both bodies were rediscovered. I got it! We heard it a second time in the repository, when we rediscovered the two bodies. It didn't seem weird at the time, but it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? And for the record, it did seem weird at the time. I'm pretty sure I freaked out about it. Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually... Discovered for the first time. Being discovered for the first time! Yeah. <clears throat> so, when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Meaning, he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. Mm -hmm. 
and that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. He cleaned his glasses. Oh, oh, oh I know, I know! Because he was super good at playing dead! Bada bing, bada boom! What? That is the worst logic I have ever heard. But honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Okay then, let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, what, what am I doing? Oh, okay, it's just like... Yes, exactly. Good thing they only give you one bullet, right? Well, here's one thing we do know. The first time we found Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared! Oh, wait, no. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. Uh -huh. But when you compare his body before being moved and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned. Uh -uh. Oh, shit. Yeah, shut up. Shoot! Boy, I'm not doing so good on this one, huh? I was trigger happy. Oh, I gotta sit through all that again. Alright, everybody. Be the chipmunks. It was in the Republic. But when you compare his body before being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, uh -huh. there was no notable difference. So when I saw the white noise blocking it, I thought that must be it. <laughs> no shortcuts. In fact, there was one clear difference between Hifumi and the nurse's office in the repository. His glasses. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Perhaps you'd like to feel the rest of us in? Yeah, you don't wear glasses. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. So that's why you don't know. But when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. Yep. Uh... I got it! It was a glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Hifumi's glasses clean. And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And then a toy we got. And whose digital camera was it? Hifumi's, of course. The character was... Princess Piggles. From Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Hifumi would have brought something like this to school. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are... I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage <laughs> like that. A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belonged to Hifumi. Mmm. Mmm. So what you're saying is... What exactly? What I'm saying is, the blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, it does not mean he wiped the blood off himself. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? Right. That's a good point. Then it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? Did you have to say copious corpse? But then, if he was just pretending to be dead... Why? What was with all that blood? Oh. Was it paint or something? It was blood. The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood for emergencies. He probably used one of those. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go all out, so he just dumped it everywhere! But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done! God, what an idiot! And if Hifumi was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. Yep. 
It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. Ifumi. A gun! It could only have been Hifumi. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. Yep. The door was locked? Well, after the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead. And when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. Mm -hmm. So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. But that means he took part in the murders. Yeah. I, I just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? Oh, why not? There's more? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless the body? Ah, uh, the note. This one? I got it! You're talking about the note Hifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Um, hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. You didn't have to tell him that part. What? In his pants? Mm. Yes. His pants. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. That's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait, this one's a little different. In my note, it said... Don't forget ice cream. I can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. I see. Then this note isn't the same one Hero got. You are just connecting these dots now. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hero, and that person could only have been... It was directed to Taka. I got it! That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! What? I don't really understand what's going on, but Hifumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Huffy! No, he pulled it from the hand. Um, just to be... <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure either. TikTok is Taka and Huffy is Hifumi, right? Oh, yes! Why must you ruin it every time? I'm pretty sure it's Makoto who's ruined it every time up to this point. What are we doing? This again, okay. What you giving me? Oh, 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 uh, great, great. I had to say something. Okay. Puffy had the note, right? Then the person it was intended for must have been happy. Oh, oh shit. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m. Leave. The time doesn't matter. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. No, that's wrong. No, there absolutely is a connection. What? what the hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. You've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says Right, to me. it was in the lab or repository the there. Yeah, right. right. Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that. No further objections. <laughs> then someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. The culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing? Celeste has gotten very quiet. 
stuffed down his pants, no less. Most likely. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Right, that's why it was ripped. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. Oh, uh... I got it! When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! It is just now occurring to me that they didn't bother to do this already. Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Like, that's something you you do as a little kid. <laughs> yup. They're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There is only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? Mm -hmm. That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa. Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. In fact, he was behind the whole thing. In fact, he's still alive. Sigh. Sorry, no. When we found him in the repository, Hifumi was truly and completely dead. Well, not exactly. The second body discovery announcement proves that. So then, who killed Hifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind, the true killer. I agree. He was killed in the repository, so he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So, he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait! But me and Sakura were together! Well... Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me, too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi. The weapon? Yeah. Because, I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office mm, and equipment the room, clean right? hammer. So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. Hell yeah! It's packed in there good and tight. <laughs> He's right though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? What? Those were accounted for in other rooms too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Um... Then, uh... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? Okay. Let me choose it from the list. No, we're doing a thing. We're doing a thing. Yeah, that's the one. Why did I get three bullets at one time? What was used to kill Hifumi? That's not a contradiction. Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? 
How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! <laughs> Check out murdergear.com slash hammer time for more info! That better be a real website. One thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be nope. one of the Justice Hammers! No, that's wrong! The murder weapon wasn't a justice hammer at all. No, it was something completely different. But seriously? A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones. Some as big as your head. And even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the justice hammers used those as a basis for their design. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma Files' note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. And whoever did that is the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him! Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We did talk about how there wouldn't be any reason for anyone to work together. At least that's what we thought at first, but... Huh, okay. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. It's got to be one of these. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one only Somebody one said one impossible actually carried earlier. out the act, can, assuming the go. rule holds true, it is... No, that's wrong! Since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? Mm -hmm. The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in a scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then, to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. Agreed. 
Th that's just awful. How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems odd. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Kyoko also mentioned a handbook which has not been brought up. Okay. I understand how an accomplice could be involved, but then who was the one pulling Hifumi's string? Celeste. That's problem numero uno right now! The true killer manipulated Hifumi to carry out a number of actions and in the end murdered him. In the debates up till now, the way the case has unfolded, when you consider all that, there's really only one person who seems to fit. Now you just have to find her. Yep, it's me. Where is she? She's next to Byakuya. Oh, okay, that's Monokuma. They got me last time, too, where I thought there was another person. Hi. Here's my answer. It was Celeste. Ah, uh, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying, then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him. Actually, you mostly spent it leading us everywhere. That I would go within ten feet of that shit for brains, that lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! What happened to your accent? Uh, uh, ah, pardonnez-moi. Just to be clear, there is evidence to support it. Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. Uh, it's both of these. Shoot, which one do they want me to choose? Because she did that, she was like, yeah, how should we yell? And then, are they the only ones who encounter... Ah, uh, crap. I'm gonna go with this one first, but it might be the second one. I got it! The behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifumi. Okay, I'm going to assume I got it right. Shush. The adults are talking. Okay, now I'm going to assume I got it wrong. Sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? Right. Yeah, I kind of already teased this. We headed out. to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? She saw the figure, right? Yeah. Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. Uh -huh. It was to get us to divide into two groups, so that we would discover both bodies at the same time? Which is a really crazy risk. In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Yeah. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. Uno momento. Oh, okay, never mind. I thought somebody was at my door. That was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? It was your way of telling him, we're on the third floor. Everything's going according to plan. Mm. That's still dangerous, though, because somebody had already been killed by that point. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? 
I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead, Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. Okay. I don't remember that, but sure. I... I don't believe it! Everything... The whole thing was one big act! Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait! Then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Right, another example of how crazy, risky, like there's... This plan is a bad plan. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it, but looking back, I can say that that one little slip up was your undoing. I don't know what he's referring to. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. Okay, let me make real fast. She came up to get us and then we showed up there. They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around frightened and confused. We're all going to die here. We're going to die just like those guys died. Those guys? I remember her saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Then pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Oh, I didn't catch this. Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Right. And so she hadn't gone into the physics lab. We didn't inform her about, or we didn't inform everybody else. Oh, I didn't catch that. Ooh, ouch. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Yeah, ooh. Minus a point for me, huh? Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. She already knew Taco was dead. You hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Piakia said that Celeste's comment doesn't make sense, but what is he alluding to? The those guys part. She was talking in plural. Okay, that's definitely not it. So I'm gonna have to grab something. All I said was... They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. Just like those guys. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Oh, come on. <sighs> okay. That needs to be fixed in the next game. It's the same... It's the same words. You're just tying them together. Their order doesn't matter. And that's all it takes. What was so strange about Celeste? So now I have to sit here and be told, oh God, what is it? Yeah, that's that's shockingly bad design for an otherwise pretty great writing. We are all going to die. We are going to die. Just like those. Yeah, it's the same word connection. That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Exactly. 
and we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? I think... I think when I read that in the moment, I think... I thought she was referring to everybody else who had already died. How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Hey, guys can be used like duders for all genders. Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. <laughs> you all have such vivid imaginations. You know that? Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? That you shouldn't have been able to take. How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on. And then, then she used the camera's timer to, to set up the picture. Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Mm -hmm. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. That just further makes your story complete BS. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? No. What could you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. No. There is no other explanation. Yeah, and uh, what are they gonna make me do to f answer this? I'm not sure what to call it. Okay, Hifumi dragging them away. No, drinking, dancing. I, I guess this one? I got it. Okay, I think that's good. It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. <gasps> That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous. Is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. Okay. Celeste thinks she can prove that there's no way Hifumi was dragging the suspect away, but is that really possible? <sighs> what are you giving me? Oh, crap. It's gonna be one of the... One of the Robo Justice things one, right? You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out! <laughs> then you just draped me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight! You tried to make me look like the bad guy! Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. Ooh. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like they that. They could only stand up straight. No, that's wrong. No. Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that because that Robo Justice suit had a certain characteristic. Yeah, we know. That's right! They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. Yeah, they would need it to be upright and they knew they were going to knock him out. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. <sighs> Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. 
The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. I can't believe I faked the whole thing. <laughs> I don't know what language that is. Well then, I suppose this is checkmate. Checkmate? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh, you idiot! What do you mean, checkmate? There goes her accent again. C Celeste? Clearly! You want to cram me into your little guilty box? Well, there's one little problem. Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? Oh, uh, yeah. I don't think I ever did figure that out. Um, hang on, before they make me do something. Yeah, he said Yasuhiro. <laughs> Wait. He said Yasuhiro. Well, then again, he was dying. He always says Mr. Nayegi. Did he ever refer to anybody else? But nobody's, I, never mind. Nobody's last name is Yasuhiro, so I think I looked at that before, too. I don't know. I'm confused. Yeah, we know. When we asked him who had attacked him, his answer was... Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I have to... Hold on. Hold on. She's the one without a last name. She said call her Ludenberg. Right? Is... Her last name, Yasuhiro? That if so, that could tie in with this. We have to make her turn on her e-handbook. Game, you clever bastard. I did not think of that. Mm. Anyway, I interrupted what she said. She said, when we asked him who had attacked him, his answer was quite clear, was it not? He said, and I quote, Yasuhiro. In other words, Yasuhiro Hagakure! Nope, he would have said Mr. Hagakure. Right, but my name isn't really Yasuhiro. It's actually Taro. Excuse me? Your confusing statements don't make any sense. You're only making things more complicated. He did say Yasuhiro, but are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Kyoko, what do you mean by that? I just gotta say, I always thought the way Celeste talked was interesting, but this new way of talking is also really good. The affectation is just amazing. I'm very jealous that people know how to do stuff like that. Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last names. Nicknames is Genocide Joe. I got it! That's right! Our last names! He called us all by our last names! Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. Yeah, because I think I said, call me Makoto, and I think that was also when I said, just call me Mac at some point. I don't know if it was because of him or not. And then, of course, I became Big Mac according to Genocide Joe. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just, his first name. To be fair, he was dying, so that's not a reach. Indecent? Don't talk. <laughs> Random chance. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? How did Kyoko know this, though? How did Kyoko know the handbook would matter? 
because at the moment to me it looks just like the problem I had with why was Biakia going into the girls locker room but the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here well no hold on there's one person it could apply to and that's Celeste she never actually told us what her real name is <laughs> What did you just say? To think you'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit. That is so great. The way she does the anger for it, like there's some muscle tightening in the in the neck. Like, oh, that's so great. Come on. Enough with your idiotic blather. Yasuhiro is a loser's name. Do I look like a loser to you? Well, do I? What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? Fine. Make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? Oh, we're going to do the, the hard part. No? Never mind. We're not going to do the hard part. Ooh, uh, ooh. Oh, oh, e handbook. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Fumi was trying to tell us. I already know it's this one. He wanted us to know the killer's last name. Yasuhiro. Right. If there's one person here who might have that last name... It would have to be you, Celeste. It would have to be you. What your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is Celestia Ludenberg. God damn it! How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. And since you have no way to contradict me, show us your e-handbook. No, that's wrong. That's it. The handbook. What? Anytime you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Monokuma told us all about it before. Yeah, but how did Kyoko know? So all we have to do is check her handbook, and that'll clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. That, that's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. Celeste, can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because, 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 because! Oh, I know why she took all those risks. I forgot. She's the gambler. I Okay, that makes sense. Until the game's over, you never know what might happen. Fine then. Let me settle it. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning, and shed light on all your crimes. And that'll bring everything to an end. Okay. Why is this coming back in? <laughs> and that. Three and four. Oh, wait, was there uh, two? Okay. I'm surprised they... Okay. I'm surprised they didn't do anything to talk about um, her BS story about what would have happened here. Uh... Yeah. Oh, this is 1 a.m. Was there a time for this? There is, but that would be. But that's here over there. Right, right, right. No, no, no. This is right. Oh, this is him. This is him showing up. Okay. Yep. 
yeah. This one. Okay, Taka's waiting at the thing. Oh, this isn't broken yet. He hasn't been attacked yet. Now he has... Oh! Oh, interesting. Okay. They are saying that... So Hifumi did make the first kill. I know that's what I said, but I wasn't sure if I was right about that. Oh, which one would it be? Hang on. One wasn't used, two was in the library. Well, one was in the room, two was the library. They wanted Taka's death to seem like the last one. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. This is him in the library. That's the second one. In this, yeah, because this is where he had three. Okay. Wrapping them up. This is when they push the. Here we go. Okay. This would be the clean hammer, which I guess at this point is not clean. What? What was this first part? It's taking me a bit to scroll back to it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, that's where that's from. I guess just this oh they're looking at each other okay here's exactly what happened before anything the killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder and that person was Kifumi with an accomplice the killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes First, they convinced someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. That someone they met with was Hiro, the murderous duo intended to pass Hiro off as the prime suspect. So, Oop, sorry. They drugged him, knocked him out, and stuffed him into the Robo Justice suit. Next, he fully positioned himself to make it look like Robo Justice was attacking him, while the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hero. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. And that's where Hifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason Hammer Number 4 was used was to create confusion about the order of the crimes. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack story. The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Hifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds that the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that. But, oops. Oh. 
While we did that, we left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. He took a blood packet from the refrigerator and Justice Hammer 3 and turned the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. He let out a scream to draw us back, and when we returned, that's what we found. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. We left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. He simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office. And once again, Hifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. He wrapped Taka's body in a tarp and used the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappeared. But even Hifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act. Which still leaves me with the question of, I'm curious as to who Hifumi thought the second kill was going to be. Their plan all along was to kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is... What is going on here? Celeste! Sorry, you lose. was the last time I was forced to utter such words. They hang heavy around my neck. Then you admit it? You're the killer? <laughs> Listen to you, trying to take charge, as if you're my private instructor. I, Celestia Ludenberg. Actually, no. Taiko Yasuhiro is fine. Oh. Taiko? So, you finally accepted it. I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. Interesting. Very different voice. Well, still A's. I screwed up a couple times. <laughs> Not many people leave presents too now. Okay, okay Monokuma. I'm ready to begin. Or, no, I suppose this is the end, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. It is indeed the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to vote. Okay? Okay. If you would, please locate your lever and cast your vote. And when the votes are tallied, who will become the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? It's basically a formality at this point, but once again, you're totally correct. The black in this time, the true killer who devised the whole stinking scheme was... Celestia Ludenberg, or more precisely, Taiko Yasuhiro. Honestly. I lost. Well, that sucks. I guess trying to work with someone else was a mistake after all. Hifumi's ineptitude was beyond all my calculations. 
I knew it. So you really did approach Afumi with this plan. But how did you get him to agree? I can't imagine he would have happily agreed to commit murder. Hmm. I'm sure she relied on her specialty, lying. <laughs> My specialty? Don't make me laugh. I didn't have to lie to get him to agree. So then... Then did you use... you know... <laughs> I knew you'd figure it out, Kyoko. You're absolutely right. To get Hifumi to act as my accomplice, mm -hmm. I used her. For everyone who's still left, I'll avoid mentioning it by name, but... Oh, oh! Okay, alright. They're talking about Alter Ego, which... Is for some reason, still getting referred to as her. But, also, cool. She's purposely not saying it because Monokuma's right there. It was the one thing Hifumi and Taka were both super into. Does she mean? Is she talking about alter ego? Say what? <laughs> what? 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 What are you talking about? Just a second. Don't interrupt. We're in the middle of a very important conversation here. <laughs> I'm totally out of the loop as usual. How sad. In other words... Then you're the one that stole it? Indeed. That's right. Oh, okay. I see. And you used it to drag Hifumi into the plan you'd come up with. <laughs> right again. Last night, after we had our meeting about how it disappeared, I paid Hifumi a little visit. Um, what are you doing here? Actually... I was hoping I could talk to you, alone. It is about what was stolen. I know who did it. What? Are you okay with this? It was Taka. He stole it. Yeah! And I have proof. Would you like to see it? As it turned out, I'd found a use for the digital camera. I'd taken you-know-what to Taka's room earlier and took pictures of it there. I deleted the picture as soon as I'd shown it to Hifumi, of course. Damnation! So it was him. But how did he do it? She was supposed to yell if either of us got close to her. <sighs> you are correct, which is why Taka forced me to steal it. Say what? As Please for me. forgive me. He... he threatened me. Oh. He did. Um, as for me... He came to my room last night unannounced and then... It's hard for me to even say. He abused me. What? And he... He took pictures. He said if I did not do as he asked, he would show them to everyone. So I, I had no choice. Damnation! That's a crime. An absolute crime. I mean, I knew he'd gone a little crazy, but... Say what? I never imagined he would, would go that far. <laughs> it was amazing how completely he bought it. I can't express how enjoyable that was. I'm about to say something I've never said before in my life. Completely unforgivable! I'm going to kill him. I'm going to fucking kill him. Most unfortunate. Wait, please. If you go now, you will be playing right into his hands. Hmm? Actually... Taka is planning to use her to escape. And he has made you his target. What? Escape? You don't mean... Taka is going to try to kill you. Indeed. And also he can keep her to himself. Mm. That bastard. This completely bastard, 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 bastard. Honestly. Can we allow him to continue with these barbaric acts? <laughs> Absolutely not. How could I? She, she. I swear I will save her. Actually... Then, would you like to join with me? It just so happens I've come up with a plan. <laughs> I have devised a way to reclaim what he has stolen and escape this dreadful school. <laughs> and with that, it is complete. Hmm? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> Hifumi agreed without a second thought. The effect that item had on him was remarkable. The power of love, even a love as twisted as that, can still drive people mad, it would seem. Um... You disgust me. I see. I have another question for you. Was that strange costume Hifumi's creation? Indeed. Yeah, it was a real pain in the butt, too. All I asked him to do was make something to hide the face and general body size. I had no idea he'd make something like that, but it's my fault for picking him in the first place. But... So, why'd you decide to make me the suspect? <sighs> because you're stupid. <laughs> Huh? That's it? Let's and in that regard, I made the right choice. I'm so glad your stupidity stu surpassed e my every expectation. 
Life must have been tough on your parents, though. I feel like I could cry. Well. But when you were explaining your plan to Hifumi, how did you explain the part about him playing dead? <laughs> what she's asking is, what was Hifumi supposed to do after that, assuming you had actually let him live? Are you okay with this? That's simple. After he did his part and pretended to be dead, once someone showed up, I told him to say he'd been seriously wounded. He was on the verge of death, but he just barely held on. Did he really believe that? <laughs> well, of course, that wasn't all there was to it. As I explained it to Hifumi, the plan was, while you were all questioning him about what had happened to him, I was going to murder someone else. At that point, Hifumi would have an alibi, so nobody could doubt him. I told him that, and he believed it. <laughs> it all seems very straightforward, stereotypical. <laughs> I just matched the lie to the level of the opponent. In fact, Hifumi ate it up. He believed the lie wholeheartedly, right up until the moment of his death. So in the end... So you had planned to kill him all along. <laughs> but of course. There would have been no point to my plan if the one who pretended to be dead did not end up dead himself. What the heck? How can human life mean so little to you? Well... That's a non-issue. I simply did everything in my power to win. Don't be me! Now you sound like Byakuya. I wonder about... No, he derives his pleasure from the thrill of the hunt. In that aspect, we are nothing alike. Why? Then what made you take things this far? What the heck? Was it really just for money? Mm. Are you talking about the $10 million Monokuma offered us? That is a lot of money, it's true. <sighs> but that's not the, all there is to it. From the moment our new life here began, my only thought has been escape. But... All along, you've been saying how we have to accept living here. You little bitch! <laughs> Didn't expect that. Obviously, that was a lie. Hey! I couldn't take it. I hated it from day one. More than anyone, anyone, anyone else in here. You little bitch! I wanted to get out. Every day was fresh torture. And you want to know why, huh? This is fine. I had a dream. And accepting a life here would have meant nothing less than giving up on my dream forever. Honestly. There was no way that I could ever do that. In the underground world of gambling, I risked my life to make a metaphorical killing. As for me... And it was all for that dream. What was this dream of yours? Isn't it wonderful? To live in a European castle. A castle? Okay. <laughs> and to gather handsome men from all over the world to serve as my butlers slash bodyguards. Okay. Why do they all have red eyes? Asked and answered again. I was going to make them dress up like vampires and satisfy my every need. Once I obtained that, I would have created a perfectly aesthetic world of decadence. This is fine. Living the rest of my life there was my only dream, my only goal. That's what life is all about. <laughs> Weird. <sighs> Combined with my own winnings, Monokuma's $10 million would have made that dream a reality. I got right to the edge, but... There is nothing to be done. Unfortunately, my dream has been scattered to the wind. Still, I don't have any regrets. I pursued my dream till the very end, so why would I? Just the worst. You sound so passionate, but you were really able to kill your own friends for it? Oh. Are you asking me to feel guilty? That's a pointless endeavor. I think nothing of sacrificing others for my own ends. I feel nothing. Do you understand? That's all there is to me. That's what makes me complete. <laughs> Isn't it terrifying how different our values are? There's simply no room for understanding. What is that's what we should be saying. And plus, how can you be so calm? Don't you realize you're about to die? Why aren't you scared? <laughs> My ability to lie is unrivaled, and I take pride in that. It's not just other people. I can even fool my own emotions. The conscious deceives the unconscious. And that's why you're not scared? Yes, That's indeed. right. I don't fear death. Kill me however you like. <sighs> but you know, if I could be reincarnated... If I had a choice, then... Isn't it wonderful? I think I would like to come back as Marie Antoinette. Hey. You just get executed again. <laughs> Weird. Celeste smiled then. And when she did, it looked to me like a poor effort to force it. She claimed she could fool her own feelings, but that statement itself must have been her final lie. And that weak, fake smile is what betrayed her. Thrills, chills, kill! You all done? Okay, then let's get rolling. The black and disturbed the peace and must pay the price. 
Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment. For her, the ultimate gambler. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. I guess I'll let Kyoko hold on to this. What? Ah. Uh. Will it really give you the hope you're looking for? I can't say I ever saw it that way. Which is why, actually, it's not important. Well then, take care, everyone. Perhaps we'll meet again in another life. Well, there's her castle. And that thing, whatever that rabbit is. The burning of the Versailles witch. Oh, they're gonna burn her at the stake. Okay. Probably considering what's actually going on here, is, this is the most appropriate? Question mark? Uh, method, I would say. Oh, that's such a weird way of doing fire. That's not how fire trucks are supposed to put out fires. <laughs> Yay, you did it, Monokuma. It's over. The third execution is over. Celeste's death is over. Celeste killed my friend, so I can't pity her, but I also can't deny that at one point I considered her a friend, too. And for him to just come along and... Isn't it just awful? Someone couldn't cut free of their regrets from the outside world, and so more people had to die. He keeps saying that at the end of these things, which in some ways almost... Like... What is Monokuma or whoever is controlling Monokuma's real desire in this? Is it to have these guys just kill each other off? Or is it for them to actually give in living here forever? Like, why? Extreme! You guys are still young. You need to place more value on your lives. What are you going to do? Jeez, and here I thought you guys were going to pass the torch of hope to the next generation. Let me out of here! What do I care about hope? I'll throw it in the trash if you just let me out of here. Too bad! You're all the embodiment of hope, whether you like it or not. And it's my destiny to knock you down one by one. It's sad, yes it is, but that reality just can't be avoided. Don't talk like you're not responsible. How long are you going to make us keep going through this? What do you want from us? God, I'm so sick of people asking me that. Give it a rest already. Hmm. So anyway, Kyoko, did I see you get some kind of key type object from Celeste? Hey, hey. So uh, what's the deal with that? What, what? What's the matter? So then. I'll answer your question if you answer mine. You. What did you do? Huh? What did you do to me? Ooh. Hey. Answer me. What did you do to my body? Ooh, how exciting. I, I have no idea. I don't know anything about it. Um, what was that just now? The mastermind did something to Kyoko's body? What does that mean? Hello. Is she a robot? 
Okay, things are getting kind of awkward. I think it's about time I get out of here. Well? Meanwhile, you guys can go on enjoying your school life. If you get lonely, give me a shout. Not that I'll do anything about it, of course. See ya later! Monokuma disappeared, leaving us all depressed and in despair. Although it wasn't all despair. There was one small hope. Right, we got the key now. Hey, Kyoko, Monokuma already mentioned it, but what's that key that Celeste gave you? So... Most likely, it's the key to one of the dressing room lockers. Huh? Then that means... Hmm. Celeste probably hid it in there. Hey. I suppose sometimes it's easiest to miss what's right beneath your nose. Well then, we'd better go check. Indeed. Good idea. We left the courtroom and rushed to the dressing room. As we approached the dressing room, Kyoko looked back at us and said, Hey. I'm going to go on alone from here. Everyone else head to the dining hall. I'll check in with you later. What? Why exactly are you going alone? So... Do you even have to ask? As she spoke, she glanced quickly at the surveillance camera. Come on. That's not what I mean. Why you? There's still the risk of a spy, you know. Yeah, I was going to say, no new information about a spy. No new information about Student 16. Then I'll go too. What? You. Please, let me go. Standing here arguing is just going to draw more attention to us. Goodbye. Do whatever you want. Thank you. Well then. Then it's up to you now. Yo! I'm going to go to the dining hall, okay? Huh? So Makoto and Koko are going to go together? <laughs> Does that mean what I think it means? What are you talking about? Okay. Good luck, Makoto. Girls like her are total pushovers when you show a little backbone. Okay, I tried to forget what Hina said. Everyone headed to the dining hall, leaving me and Kyoko there alone. Shall we go? Yeah, let's go. So then... We need to get into that locker. Kyoko took the key Celeste had given her and unlocked the locker. And as the locker swung open, we saw... You're really cold. Good morning. It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> it's safe, thank goodness. I'd never heard Kyoko sound so relieved. It was like she was speaking from the bottom of her heart. <laughs> I just did what Celeste asked. I didn't say a word. I stayed quiet the entire time. No. Oh, and I think I might be able to open the last set of files soon. Maybe as early as tomorrow. Mm. I'm doing my best, so please wait just a while longer. <laughs> <sighs> so now we can officially say the case is closed. As far as this incident is concerned, sure, but can we take a second since we have this opportunity? I want you to be honest with me. Please tell me, what are you trying to do all on your own here at the school? You. Is that why you wanted to come here with me? However. Regardless, that's not something you need to know right now. I don't need to know? That just makes me even more worried. What? Worried? Like what happened during the investigation this time? You disappeared and we didn't see you again. Without warning, without explanation. When you do that, Indeed. it's only natural that they think I'm the mastermind spy, right? And you too. No, I, I believe in you. What? You believe in me. Yeah, Makoto, you have no reason to just yet. What are you doing? You, you did this with Sayaka. Isn't it obvious? People believe in their friends, right? That's why I want you to tell me what are you doing. And I want you to believe in me too. Because we're friends. I understand. It's true. Maybe I can believe in you. Just a little bit more. Then? That's fine. Fine. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why I've been disappearing and where I've been going. You see... Okay. What I heard from Kyoko then was... Well, frankly, it kind of blew my mind. Right after I told Kyoko I believe in her, she told me a story that was... Well, almost unbelievable. I decided I had to confirm what she told me with my own two eyes, so I waited for nighttime to come. And when it did, I went into action. Okay. It's going a little longer than I expected. The boys' bathroom on the second floor doesn't have a surveillance camera or monitor in it. Is that the one with the room I noticed on the map? And in the storage closet there, way in the back... She said it was way in the back of the boys' bathroom storage closet, but could Kyoko really be right about this? This is clearly part of this chapter still. Uh, no, that's not boys. There we go. 
Everybody knows men are triangular. Triangular pointing down. I can't really... Yep. Cleaning supplies. That's the big secret. It's just a normal st storage quad as far as I can tell. The secret Kyoko told me about. Can it really be hidden here? Okay. She said it was way in the back of the storage closet, but I mean, seriously? Without thinking, I placed my hand on the back of the storage closet, and suddenly, as if I were being yanked in, ooh, it's a false wall. Gashunk. At the same time as I heard that sound, I fell through the wall. I had no idea what was going on. I still don't. That was a lot of noise. I had fallen through the back of the storage closet. Uh -huh. It turned out the back wall was like a revolving door and I'd made my way to the other side. Just like Kyoko had said. Correct. In the boys' bathroom. Okay, obviously we just did it. We, what was the flashback for? They rely on these flashbacks way too much. Like we didn't need that scene. That just adds to the time. So this is the secret room. But what's in here? I don't know. We have a stool. We're sitting. A normal desk with normal drawers. There's papers on the floor. No cameras or anything. And a large bookshelf. There's a bunch of files in what look like volume after volume of yearbooks. They're all covered in dust. Looking at everything, one file at the edge of the bookshelf caught my eye. Hope's Peak Academy Student Registry. This is the only thing in here not covered in dust. Is this how Kyoko knew Celeste was going by the wrong name? Has someone been looking at it recently? I slipped the file into my hand, but before I had a chance to take a look at it, a slip of paper fell out of the file and I turned my attention to it. You must not leave. What's this? That's kind of weird. I could understand if it said like, I can't leave, but you must not leave. What is this? My head feels funny. This strange sensation. It's like deja vu. Those words, you must not leave. I've seen them somewhere before. Have I? I'm drawing a blank. I can't quite remember. He is too. What do I know? What don't I know? I... Um, the hell? Who was that? A strange sound rang out through my head. Was that 16? It felt like it was shaking my brain back and forth. And then, darkness. I don't understand what's happening. I don't know what started it. It's all over. And with that, I opened my eyes. I didn't know how long it had been. Ow. Apparently something hit me and I lost consciousness. That's all I understood. The dull, throbbing pain in my head proved that much at least. And the books are gone. An empty bookshelf. Gone. It's all gone. Gone, baby, gone. The yearbooks, the student registry, and even the note that had fallen on the floor. It's all gone. What does this mean? But my brain refused to do any more work. The insistent pain in my body... Er, in my body... The insistent pain in my head began to spread across the rest of my body. For now, I should go back to my room, get some rest. How did somebody get in there without him knowing? My body was heavy with pain, my mind heavy with thought. I dragged myself back toward my room. Somehow I made it back to the first floor of the school. The farther I walked, the more I felt... Things are getting blurry. Can't see in front of me. I couldn't stop myself from collapsing right there. And after that... Huh? As if from a vast distance, I heard a sound. I just noticed the time says the unknown. It was faint, but undeniable. I looked because the color choice for the... The character names for the dialogue is weird. That sound? It's coming from the gym? As I desperately hauled my shaky frame toward the gym, the sound got stronger and stronger. What's going on? It can't be nothing here in the gym? Weird. I didn't make a sound as I opened the door to the gym. 
The sounds coming from inside, meanwhile, only intensified that much more. Whoa, Sakura, why are you fighting Monokuma? Before me, there raged a battle beyond anything humanly possible. It's interesting that they've chosen to give Sakura a glowing eye. A different color, but a glowing eye all the same. You know, one side's not human, that's for sure, but regardless, I couldn't stop staring. I forgot to move or even breathe. Why, you? What do you think you're doing? I asked you a question. What's the meaning of this? How dare you defy me? This wasn't part of the deal! No, are you saying Sakura's the spy? The deal? I've made a decision. I will no longer retreat. No longer compromise. No longer regret. I've made my decision. I'm going to resist you. Hmm. Okay. But you do realize what will happen if you go through with this, right? You haven't forgotten, have you? What I'm holding hostage? <clears throat> what am I looking at? What am I hearing? A hostage? And could it be the mastermind spy is? Oh, that makes me sad. Sakura. Jeez, there's only, we're less than half of what we were. Huh. Okay. Oh, great. Just what we needed. Okay, well, we have brought uh, chapter three to an end here. We said, good said goodbye to three more people. Um, it's weird. I thought this particular mystery was a lot easier to figure out. And yet I also felt like it was the one that left me um, without a whole heck of a lot of holes. It's certainly nothing like... The first one where Leon just really did not have the motivation to kill Sayaka as a, a response to the attack on him. But it did match up the situation with the second one where it's like, Byakia is going to the girl's locker room. Why? And then the, like the, the best thing I can think of, and I don't know if I came up with any thoughts before that, was he's being followed by Toko at this time. And so maybe he thought she'll never find me here, you know, uh, but it was never said. So I don't know for sure. And the same thing here this time. Well, maybe not. Maybe this time it was answered. Maybe this is the first one that I feel like they completely got it, which is that Kyoko, uh, had an inkling that, well, had more than an inkling knew that a handbook would matter because she knew that Celeste was not going by her actual name, which would make sense because now we know she knew about the secret room that has these yearbooks. Uh, so there's that. So now we know Sakura was the spy, or at least that's what it looks like, but isn't going to be the spy any longer. The person who hit Makoto in the back of the head in the room, still not sure how they got to him or not. I'm putting my money on student 16. I don't think it's Byakuya. Definitely doesn't seem to fit Toko or Hina. There's no way that Hiro, who I just for some reason cannot trust, uh, could get his hair under that mask. But there's, there's no way it's Sakura either. Like the frame is nowhere close to Sakura's frame. So they had to be them and they had to be hanging out in that room area all this time. Whew, boy. Okay. Well, it's time for a break. Thanks for joining me guys. Let's see what happens next. <laughs>